Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. What you're about to experience is a free, worldwide interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to episode number 224 of Category 5 TV. It's Tuesday, January the 3rd, 2012. It's Tuesday already? It's Tuesday already. Mm. I mean 2012. Is it 2012? Mm. I guess that's the shocking part. It's the end of the world. It's... Hey, how are We're you doing? We're still fine. I'm um, fine. You know, I'm swell. I am swell. Yeah? Yeah, yeah Christmas? You know, Christmas is good. New Year's is was good. Was Christmas good? It was awesome. Yeah? You yeah. guys had a good time? Yeah. Yeah. How about you? I just wanted to throw that in. So. I hope everyone's Christmas was good. I hope everyone's Christmas was For fantastic. For holiday festivities. Hmm. Yeah. And a happy new year to you. Mm-hmm. Our first uh, our first show back. Nice to have you here. We weren't uh, sure if you were going to be able to get in. Something mm-hmm. happened that uh, that we none of us were expecting. And uh, mm-hmm. well, what, you want to tell the viewers what's uh, what's going on in your life in the next couple of months? In my life? Yeah. Well, you see, there's this thing called continuing education where I feel like I must further my education. And Why do you do you know, such things? And maybe I'm just missing the school life. Maybe I secretly want to be a student again. It's just no, all no, the no. homeboys. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's it. You miss it. your homeboys. Yeah. But uh, regardless, my new class starts up next week on Tuesdays. Isn't that unreal? So, like, of all the nights, like, couldn't you have called in and said, like, come on. Can you not change this for me to be, yeah. like, a Wednesday? I mean, forget about all the other students. Mm-hmm. I mean, what are you, what are you taking? Um, the, the whole course is called Web Design Essentials. Okay. And this next one is just web design, so... Do you know what you're going to be getting into? Are you going to be doing um, coding or... We've already using? done some, some coding. Like, we've done some um, just basic HTML. We've done... Um, PHP. I've taken a course for Python. Right. Very good. Um, yeah, so this one I imagine will just be more HTML, CSS, just Excellent. like the design kind of stuff. Which is important because even though those are the base, you know, you think HTML and you think 10 years ago, mm-hmm. but that's still the base of the internet is hypertext markup language. So even if you're programming in PHP, you're outputting HTML, XML. So it's very, very important to have that base knowledge. So mm-hmm. very good. Well, we'll be excited to uh, to find out how, how that do. changes and improves your your web development skills, and maybe when you come back, yeah. then uh, it'll be a good opportunity for and you, you to know, show off. And you know, not to brag, but I've been getting nineties so far. So, have you? St- you didn't start till tomorrow. What? No, Next no, week. in the in the entire course. Like this is my this is my fifth course out of or fifth class oh. out of six to finish the course. Oh, so you take several classes spread out over yeah. time. Okay. Yeah, and they only offer one. I thought you were semester. prophesying into the future. Like, no, I'm already getting ninety. I foresee. <laughs> Yeah, I'm smart, but I'm not that smart. <laughs> hmm. Coming up tonight, we are going to be looking. Pardon me, we're going to be looking at. <laughs> You're laughing at the smart. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm not. She's so smart. I'm not poking fun at you at all. Oh. Um, <laughs> speaking of, you know, being at that level, we're going to be looking at making Linux usable for children about the age of three. What are you trying to say, Robbie? I don't. I don't think that segue really worked. <laughs> We do want you to come back after school. It worked as an insult. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, (laughs) We're going to be looking at at, uh, some cool software for your Linux operating system. We're going to be giving a shout out to uh, G-Dog. So uh, stick around. We're going to be learning all about how we can share our computers, our Linux computers, with our our young ones uh, while not sacrificing our own favorite desktop. So uh, we're going to be checking that out a little later on in the show. You've got some news coming up as well. Oh, of course I do. So, let's see what's coming up in the newsroom. We have... hmm, NASA has successfully orbited two satellites around the moon to provide incredible detail. Speaking of satellites, a group of computer hackers want to block censorship from the internet by launching their own network of orbital satellites, which block government abilities to censor its content. Mobile train track switching technology could be exploited by hackers. Mm. And a real-life universal translator lets people of different languages speak to one another. Stick around because these stories are coming up later in the show. I hope it supports Klingon. You would. That would be amazing. (laughs) I'd sit here talking in Klingon and I would specifically... And I would sit here rolling my eyes. No, you would understand because of their technology. Technology, Krista. I would still roll my eyes. It's still Klingon. You'd, she'd still roll her eyes. Klingon oh. is Klingon. <laughs> Just jealous. 
just jealous. Hey, mm. our mobile site is up and running, mobile.cat5.tv. If you're using one of those cool mobile devices, I've got my iPod Touch, which uh, I'm able to watch the show live. I can't really, though, because it's, it's really distracting when I'm talking and it just... And watching. It, at and watching at the same time. It's really distracting so i try not to do that but you can so head on over to mobile.cat5.tv also a note that we've got live.cat5.tv is our new live website for viewing uh, if you're having any trouble with our main website all you have to do is just uh, keep it in the back of your mind bookmark it live.cat5.tv for when the site is experiencing higher than normal call volumes and unable to serve up your request so live.cat5.tv works as an interim step for you uh, we will be right back uh, after this uh, short break. Cheers. They're hitting the road or the dusty trails. Liquid Image Canada captures the action with a true point of view HD video camera built directly into a high quality MX goggle. It records every bit of the excitement exactly how you see it. If high octane isn't your thing, take a relaxing underwater adventure and capture it forever in high definition video with a high quality underwater camera mask from Liquid Image Canada. Perfect for the enthusiast snorkeler or the deep sea diver. Check out the entire line of camera masks for every sport. LiquidImageCanada.com This is Category 5 Technology TV. You'll find us online at www.category5.tv. The, the first thing that you asked me when you came in here, it's not how are you doing, what's going on, How's life? It's, did you get any cool Christmas presents? Oh, well, that's important. Very I important. Know. Mainly I Prioritatis asked that because I saw the little Zunum. Spock sitting on your table there when I came that in. And he looked new. That is the coolest thing. Definitely new. That's why I asked. You, you can't see this, this guy. You probably heard him a little bit last week, but uh, I got a Spock bobblehead that when you walk by him, he says catchy Spock phrases. Like live long like, and prosper. And <laughs> like all the catchy Spock You are, after there. all, an illogical being. Things like that. So I got, I, I did get one really, really cool Christmas gift mm -hmm. from you. By the way, ah. did you make that fudge? Yes. Oh my goodness. I stirred New it and because the amazing. stove was hot, my sweat went into it and I burned myself. See, that's my what that little aftertaste was. So, I mean, there's everything in there. Oh. A little bit of everything. I was going to say it was really good. Now I'm really grossed out. <laughs> Very You're nice. welcome. Thank you. <laughs> and absolutely fat free, I'm sure. Uh -huh. So I could feel There's good no about sugar, uh, no wolfing butter. that out. No, no, none at all. <laughs> but yes, you did get me one other gift, and and I want to. I, I promised I would demonstrate its usage. We'll have a little unboxing, and uh, let's 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 go take a look at this. Pizzeria. That was that was good. Wow. <laughs> there we go. Hmm. Star Trek cut pizza. I got some spinach on my finger. Hmm. Well, this looks Give delicious. It and uh, it, it might be a little cold. I prepared it uh, before the show. My, are we supposed to cheers pizzas first? Is that how the preferably happens? before you bite it? Yes. <laughs> you know that's a nice clean cut. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You can see the edge is perfectly <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Starship Enterprise well, for the win. Well, that's delicious. Isn't that good? Oh, my goodness. And we both have to take a bite because of that garlic. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I have spinach in my teeth now, too. Yeah, that, would so be, <laughs> that was the plan. <laughs> Damn, anyway. Oh, well. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. All right. Viewer questions. Hmm. I think there's a, there's a couple in there. First viewer question, actually, in the chat room. Dennis Kelly wants to know if this is your new Christmas cardigan you are sporting tonight. Yes, this is my cardigan from Christmas, a.k.a. my Christmas cardigan. Hmm. One of my uh, right other on. fantastic gifts, yeah. Oh, this is not viewer. Hold on. I am new to the PC, apparently. <laughs> it makes, uh, when I actually get to the viewer questions, makes it that much more interesting. Last week, interesting. You, you didn't hear exactly what happened, but last week, just before the show, uh, Eric was on his way <coughs> on his way in. Ten minutes before the show, fifteen minutes before the show, mm -hmm. fired up his uh, the what we call the the guest computer, which is the mm -hmm. one that you use for the chat room and everything. Bang went off. 
it turns out one of the capacitors on the motherboard actually exploded. So the computer's toast, unfortunately. So hmm. it's an older system. We got a lot of life out of it. I like it was like an Eric. old P4. Yeah, because he was on his way. Mm -hmm. So had the electrician here today. They're looking at what the problem was and seeing if they can get around that, uh, that issue. So we're really hoping mm -hmm. for a surge protector at the circuit breaker. Yeah, That's that would be a good for. idea. Yeah. You Instead of very thousands of individual <laughs> ones plugged into each individual device. Oh, well, let's see. We have some. Oh, Krista, no. how can people send oh. in their viewer questions? How? How? Well, they send them to, now, what if I get the, the address wrong? Yeah. They can send them to... Oh, Live yep. at Category5.tv <laughs> you know, if you'd like I to email it. us. It's your email address. I, I mean, it, it comes to your every desk. Every single time I'm on here, I yep. say it. But I don't actually listen to myself say it. You've never said it. It was you just were drooling and carrying <laughs> on. <laughs> I thought I said the email address. Live at category five dot TV is where you can email your question or get in the chat room category five dot TV mm -hmm. as well. So it's gonna be one of those nights, isn't it? It's always one of those nights when you're mm -hmm. here. Yeah. <laughs> Feels so special. Oh, and now an excellent question from Franklin. Hey, he says, hi, Robbie. I was wondering if you would elaborate on the file system, command lines, and all those funny little symbols in the terminal. In order to use them, how do I need to think? Keep rocking. Thank you. Cheers, Franklin. Okay. So the fancy symbols. Can I yeah, see this? Yeah, like the... Like the tilde? Yeah, and the, the dollar, dollar sign. sign. Okay. Forward slash. Sure. Let's bring up a terminal window on my computer. Now, for those of you who are watching for the first time or are using Microsoft Windows or a Mac, I'm using Linux. Very cool desktop operating system, and it uh, it allows me to do anything that uh, that I need to be able to do, but it's through free software. So this is a free desktop operating system. You can install this on a PC. So if you've got a Windows computer, uh, you can change it to Linux if you like. So basically, okay. So if you go CD slash, okay. So you're in the root folder of your computer. Your computer. So, and by root, I don't mean the slash root because that's this one. Okay. But the root folder is basically the highest part of the tree. So if you were to look at that in a uh, computer, uh, like a, you know, so you're looking at your computer this way, then what you'd be looking at is slash is the, the base level of your hard drive. Linux is neat because it uses mount points instead of drive letters. So if you're used to Windows, think of your C drive. So C colon slash is the same as on Linux, your slash uh, partition folder something like that okay so looking at that considering you know just to make sense of it that is you know cd slash is like going in windows c colon and then when you're there going to cd slash okay similar kind of thing so that is basically just the highest level of your hard drive going into cd home this is where all your user folders are found okay so my user is called demo i can go into the demo folder and then i've got all my files okay so now if I want, what I can do is I can go back to CD slash, and I can go CD tilde, and that takes me immediately into that same folder, my home folder, which is slash home slash demo in my case, right? It's whatever your username is. This computer is called demo because it's the demo computer for the show. So similarly, if you're logged in as, you know, if I'm logged in as Joe and I type in CD tilde, it's going to take me to the Joe folder in home. CD space dot dot takes me up one level. So I knew I was in slash home slash Robbie or slash demo, right? So CD dot dot is going to take me up one to just home, and then I'm back to where I can see all my users. Okay, does that help? Uh, when you were mentioning about dollar sign, those are like those are variables. So if I type in uh, Right, so I just type that. Now, if I go echo dollar sign test, uh, maybe it's case sensitive. Yeah. Okay. So I set test equals hello, and then I echoed it out, which means to basically print it to the screen, and it gave me what I what I set it to. Okay. So that's a variable, the dollar sign. So that's for setting different things. You know, if you want to set environment variables or whatever. Does that help? It's it's uh, it's interesting to once you learn the differences between a Linux file system versus a uh, Windows file system, for example, because when you when you recognize the power of a mount point and realizing that you've got slash home slash Robbie slash 
pictures is all your pictures. But all you, you could take that, you could get a brand new hard drive, you could install it in your computer, you could drag your entire pictures folder over there to that new hard drive, and instead of mounting it on like a slash or whatever, you can mount it to slash home slash Robbie slash pictures. So every time now that I go slash home slash Robbie slash pictures, it's actually taking me into that other hard drive. So you can get a lot of speed by setting things, for example, slash home slash Robbie is on a different physical hard drive than slash, right? Because then your files, your programs, which are on slash user slash bin, are all going to be running from hard drive number one. All of your user setting files and personal settings are going to be on the other hard drive. So you get improved performance. That's the very base uh, of the power of a mount point on Linux. Very, very cool stuff once you get into it. Cool. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Love to have you join us in the chat room. Uh, if you're new here tonight, let us know. Nice to see everybody. Does that help? Uh, I think it helped. Yeah, good. Good, good. <laughs> and what I think matters. What? No, I'm just saying. Oh, in okay. general. So that mattered to you? Just in general. Um, you want our question? I've got more questions. That'd be great. The question is, do you want them? I would love questions. I mean, we're on the air. We might, <laughs> I, I might just sit here and eat pizza, but mm -hmm. at some point, there comes a point where it's, it's all about the viewer. Okay, so, well. Right. Oh. My lips are so dry today. I spent like the day in the hospital yesterday, and my lips are like su super dry. Have you ever been to the hospital where it's like your lips just dry right out? It's such dry air. Mm -hmm. I haven't recovered, so cheers. Don't worry, I'm you not. You know, how he just cuts me off. Yeah. I mean, that's that's really important. I mean, that we should... Well, I just, saw you, were fumb I just saw you were fumbling with Firefox tabs over there. <laughs> so so. Trying, to, trying to cover for me on a uh, PC. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, well, that was nice of you. But, you know, I am quick. Quick like Bunny. And I have a question for you. Okay. Another question actually from Franklin. Again, oh, hey, hey he again, Franklin. question hogging. But we like that, so Could be a it's different not a Franklin. bad thing. Who knows? I actually, I checked the email address. Oh, okay. Sam Franklin. Sam Franklin. He's an inquisitive fella. He's just an uber fan this week. Mm -hmm. It's all good. He says... It's probably a good thing that he's separated into two questions. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, it'd be one long email. We wouldn't know what to do with it. That's true. Mm. Can, I, can I ask the question now? I wish you would. <laughs> Why do you keep interrupting me? <laughs> <laughs> if I just say it really fast, so I'm afraid... Oh, mm, 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 bad idea. Okay. Okay, so Franklin says... Greetings, maestros. Hmm. Robbie, I have installed. <laughs> I have installed trial version 11.04 on a four gig thumb drive. Uh, after about a week, I have used up all my space. Holy smokes! I keep all four gigs. All my files. That's on like a... <laughs> one video. <laughs> See what I put up with? I can't even get through the question. Will you just read already? I'm trying. Ah, it says I keep all my files on a separate thumb drive, but still I run out of space. I find that Ubuntu keeps a lot of thumbnails, well over a gig, so I trash them. But or I go back into the thumbnail folder and find it has not trashed them, but doubled them. Is there a C cleaner for Ubuntu or a system restore to take it back in time when it had space? Thank mm. you. What kind of a paradox is that? You go into the thumbs folder, you highlight them all to delete them, which creates thumbs of them. Wow. Don't know where that would end. One of the things you can do is turn <laughs> off thumbnail generation. Bring up your uh, your computer, right? So, for example, preferences, media, uh, no, preview. Other previewable files, show thumbnails, never. And that will solve that for you. At least the creation of thumbnails. Next problem. Okay, you've only got four gigs, right? So to run your core operating system and your home folder and all of your files and all your temp files and everything on that one thing, it might be good to create a RAM drive or some form of transient uh, memory. Mount things to your temp folder so when you reboot it, it clears out or some, something. But uh, there is a tool called Computer Janitor used to be called like Cruft Cleaner and all that in Ubuntu. I'm going to bring up Synaptic Package Manager. So I'm going to type in computer-jan. Okay, I've already got it in. No, do I? Yeah, I do. No, I don't. The check mark threw me off. Computer Janitor. 
Okay, what I want is computer dash janitor dash GDK. That is going to give me the GUI. Okay, so mark for installation. That's going to also add computer janitor because that's required. Okay, but you want to make sure you get the GTK because that is going to give you the graphical front end. Okay, install that. Here it goes. Cool thing about Linux is it gets all your software for you off the internet. You don't need disks if you've got high speed internet connection. It's very, very quick. It's done. Okay. We've got Computer Janitor. It's installed. It's free. Close out of Synaptic Package Manager. Let's look for it. Did it put it anywhere on our menu that is recognizable? If not, yeah, see, I don't see it just readily available to me. Sometimes it takes a reboot to get it in there. But what I'll do is I'll just go into Terminal, just for the sake of showing you. Computer-Janitor-GTK. There it is. Okay, so what this tells me, you know, I can highlight something. I can say, hey, this play deb thing is taking up some space and it's a package that's no longer supported. You don't need it. You can click on something, you know, and it says, well, this package was, was installed because another package needed it, but now it's not required anymore. It's taken up three megabytes. It isn't huge, but it's something, okay? This is the temporary junk that you're talking about. If you've also installed a bunch of stuff, on your thumb drive in, in the Linux partition, right? Then it might be keeping an apt cache. So all the DEB packages that it's downloaded in order to get all, the, all your software installed, you might want to clear that out. Uh, but uh, other than that, really, I mean, with four gigabytes, you're, you're kind of limited as to space. So you might just consider watching how much stuff you install, what you install. Uh, remember that when you run like an apt get uh, dist upgrade or something like that, you're going to have a lot of packages left over that you want to clean up. So um, let us know how it goes and uh, and we'll you know look at that step by step and, and get you a little bit further. But I hope that that kind of points you in a direction that will help you. Uh, and of course, if there's any other uh, suggestions in the chat room, uh, join us in there. View the chat logs for episode number 224. And I'm sure you'll find a lot of help from our community as well. Thank you so much for the question. I've got more questions. Do you want them? Great. <laughs> yeah? I just thought I'd ask because, you know, you're very opinionated today. I don't know what you're talking uh, about. Here's a question from Dennis Kelly. Okay. Uh, hey, Robbie, Dennis. Yeah. if someone wanted to get their own computer repair business started, what suggestions would you have for training and where to start? Training. See, here's the thing is that it, computers in general, it's such a fast-moving, fast-paced industry that training in the traditional sense, schooling, I, I don't know if you find this with, with what you do or not, maybe not so much, but with hardware, it becomes obsolete very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. So what it boils down to is, is just changing your perspective a little bit so that you're not pursuing knowing how the current hardware works, but instead understanding the underlying technologies, uh, understanding what the components that go into a computer are and what they do, that's probably more important to you than being able to take apart a laptop and put it back together. Uh, because laptops are going to change, desktops are going to change. When they bring out new sockets for the processors, you, you don't necessarily need to know how to install a 775 as long as you know the basic underlying principles of installing processors, making sure that you use the thermal compound correctly and things like that. So uh, apprenticeship is a fantastic way to learn if someone will take you uh, in order to get started. Um, you could possibly look at uh, look around find an I would suggest finding an honest computer shop they're hard to come by sometimes uh, but if you can find an honest computer shop kind of feel the waters and and see if they'll uh, take you on at a at a lesser wage even just to to get some experience and explain to them that you know I'm interested in eventually starting my own business make sure they don't think that you're trying to compete with them but uh, you know as as a way to get some education apprenticeship can help and they may need a little extra extra hands uh, in the shop and you may be able to learn a couple things. Um, tapping into resources like this show is a great way to, to learn some exciting things. Uh, we do try to take things to the to the base level so that you're learning the, the uh, like I say, the underlying technologies. I don't want to say that too much, but really it's key uh, so that you're, you're learning how things work rather than how a particular device works. Uh, with computers, it's ever-changing, so um, I think it's important just to, to understand how to f how to work it, how to what what things do. So, build yourself a computer, find some parts, um, go to eWaste and see if they've got some old computers that uh, that they're scrapping, that uh, that 
possibly you could take apart and put back together and mess around with. I don't know what your level of experience is, so I'm saying this is you know very base entry level stuff, but um, yeah, I think that's probably what I would suggest. And I welcome suggestions in the chat room. I don't know. But it is tough, right? Because education per se is it's really the field education is what's going to get you. Having a troubleshooting mindset is, is key in this industry, especially if you're going to start your own business. You've got to be able to troubleshoot. You've got to uh, work that, um, learn how to uh, be uh, just real, real good at um, diagnosing something and, and figuring something out. Mm -hmm. That's that's really important in this kind of industry because otherwise, what happens is you can get a, a reputation for being a bad business or a dishonest business only on account of poor troubleshooting, which is really unfortunate because you may be a very honest person, and like I say, it's hard to find honest technicians. So um, it's it's important that you are upfront, honest mm -hmm. with your clients, um, and and tell them if you're if you're stumped and and use troubleshooting um, to, to figure stuff out. Trial and error a lot of times. I hope that helps. We're getting right down to the bare, bare <laughs> basics there. <laughs> Sammy says, got a biff with Microsoft. What's that about? Hmm. Rhetorical question. Rhetorical. Thank you very much for the question. Shall we head into the newsroom? Oh, I don't see why not. All right. Samana just got a scroll down. All right. <laughs> Ready for the news. Great. All right. So here are the top stories from the category 5.TV Newsroom. The U.S. Space Agency, NASA, has succeeded in placing two new satellites in orbit around the moon. Both, sa both spacecraft were both spacecrafts were put in elliptical paths around a lunar body over the weekend after performing braking maneuvers following their more than 100-day journey from Earth. The identical Grail twins are to map gravity variations across the lunar body in unprecedented detail. This is intended to help scientists refine our theories for how the moon formed. Very cool. Oh, I can't work this PC. Just do-do-do. <laughs> 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 computer Sorry. hackers plan to take the internet beyond the reach of censorship by putting their own communication satellites into orbit. The scheme was outlined at the Chaos Communication Congress in Berlin. The project's, or project's organizers said the hackerspace global grid will also involve developing a grid of ground stations to track and communicate with the satellites. Longer term, they hope to help put an amateur astronaut on the moon. Hmm. Wow. I volunteer. Hobbyists have already put a few small satellites into orbit, usually only for brief periods of time, but tracking the devices have proved difficult for low-budget projects. You're chuckling. I see I'm that. chuckling because I was just thinking about how amateur <laughs> enthusiasts are putting something up, but only for a short amount of time. I'm, I'm envisioning it exploding as it You're probably envisioning to, everything exploding since the uh, latest, yeah. you know, you computer. Know. <laughs> <laughs> The hacker activist Nick Farr first put out calls for people to contribute to the project in August. He said the increasing threat of internet censorship has motivated the project. He says the first goal is an uncensorable internet in space. Let's hmm. take the internet out of the control of terrestrial entities. Interesting. I think so. A security expert is warning that a shift to a mobile communications technology could expose rail networks to hackers. Professor... Yes, Prof. Stefan K oh, Katzenbeiser. Hmm. We apologize to the professor <laughs> who is so watching sorry. right now. I'm just kidding. I'm a Saskatchewanian. That's, you know, good excuse. <laughs> We're um, Canadian, eh? <laughs> so, like, we don't need to pronounce your names, eh? It's not that we don't need to. I can't. We're incapable, eh? I mean, give us a, a French spelling of color <laughs> and we'll do it. But oh. that's about it. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I didn't mean Continuing to. Continuing on. Yeah, carrying on. Okay. This, this brilliant this is, professor said something. This is something. why I don't come on the show anymore. I actually don't even have classes. You're going to school to learn? Oh, really? I don't have classes. <laughs> oh. I just, I can't take Robbie anymore. Oh, yeah, I'm pretty hard to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> Continuing back to the news. Mm. Mm -hmm. So the professor made the claim <laughs> at the Chaos Communication Congress in Berlin. He said that the systems which switched trains from one line to another could be shut down if encryption keys went astray. 
He stressed that trains would not be in danger, but there could be delays. The technology is already being used in parts of Europe, Africa, and Asia. Network Rail is rolling it out in the UK and aims to cover all Britain's rail lines, Britain's rail lines by the end of 2014. Hmm. Uh, Lexaphone has developed a space space age technology. Uh, I'm sorry, Akin. Is it? Is that right? It can. Yes. Hmm? I'm sorry. I'm having a bad talking day. Oh, a technology akin to the universal translator of Star Trek. <laughs> of course, calling it an advanced automatic interpretation translation software, all without the need for an internet connection or even a smartphone. Their technology allows people to have regular conversations in different languages. When one party speaks, what they say is automatically translated into the other person's language and vice versa. Man. The service will begin with Eng- English, Spanish, and Italian, and the company plans on rolling out many more languages in the near future, such as French, German, Portuguese, and major East Asian languages like Japanese, Chinese, and Korean. Hmm. That's Lexaphone's fantastic. Director of, just talked right over you, Director of Marketing <laughs> Communications, Forest Rain, I'm sorry. <laughs> Tell the people what they want to know, Krista. Well, they don't want to listen. They don't come here to listen to you, Robbie. Wait, that's wrong. Anyways, Lexaphone's Director of Marketing Communications, Forest Rain Marcia, uh, claims that through their software, there's no language gap anymore because everyone stays in their own language. I think that's pretty cool. I think that's super cool. Mm-hmm. Sorry for interrupting. <laughs> I just give you a hard time. It's like my last show in a while, so... Right. You know. But if you guys are interested in the news and not Robbie and I bickering, you can get the full stories at category5.tv slash newsroom. Uh, the category5.tv news, newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributions by our community of viewers. If you guys have a news story you think is worthy of on-air mention, you can email us at newsroom at category5.tv. From the category5.tv newsroom, I'm Krista Wells. Krista, thank you so much. Oh, and we're done. <laughs> We're done that that portion. Hey, tonight's uh, news is brought to you by Garden Gate Farms. You can get the certified organic broccoli sprout and wheatgrass juice right on their website, GardenGateFarms.com. You can find a vendor near you. Also, Planet Calypso. Get the free online multiplayer game, massive multiplayer online roleplay game, cat5.tv slash Calypso. It's awesome. And, of course, we're brought to you by Pogoplug, cat5.tv slash Pogoplug. Check that out and uh, go to that URL to get your free 5 gigabyte uh, personal cloud. Can't beat that. Cool. How, how many technologies do you think are inspired specifically by Star Trek? I mean, how it's many amazing. technologies? The pizza My cutter. Flip phone, the pizza cutter, definitely inspired by Trek. You can never look at a pizza cutter again without realizing that it is right. the approximate shape of the USS Enterprise. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. a true fact. So that's all we can come up with, eh? I'll I bet our personally, chat room I could actually do don't watch Star Trek. Get out. I have never. No, I mean it. Get go. <laughs> show show <laughs> something over. I say we put this to a vote. <laughs> <Yeah>. Chat room. <laughs> chat room. Oh no, I'm scared of the answer. Don't vote. Yeah, uh, Gar- yeah. Garby says tablets, huh. the iPad, all of the tablets that are out there, the Android devices, they are so much like the pad. P A D D of Next Generation. Hmm. The uh, the communicator, the original communicator, the tricorder uh, in Next Generation is very similar to a flip phone. Those we don't see as much, but the iPhones and those kinds of mm-hmm. devices are very similar to stuff off of the original series. I will Anything take your else? word for it. Anything else? I was watching for it. Tasers? Uh, G Siegel says, Robbie F. Just because I'm watching the chat room for uh-huh. you. Okay. okay. Well, I just said tasers. Dennis Kelly says tasers. And then you talked <laughs> over tasers? me. Tasers? Tasers? You talked over okay, me. Okay, G. Siegel, who says, Robbie F., hmm. I downloaded Debian, and the site stated that I uh, only need DVD-1. It does not seem so. What did you do- download last week? Last week, re- you'll remember, I actually used the business card download. It's 46 megabytes. Brilliant. And then it down- downloads what you've selected during the install. So if I, if I say just uh, desktop installation... It just gives me the, the packages for that through apt. So you get this 46 megabyte ISO, and you're good to go. Everything else comes online, and you just get it that way. So you don't need to go as far as downloading the DVD, because there's a lot of stuff on there that you don't need. And even if you install it, it's probably going to need to update it anyways. So, cool? 
Thanks for the question, G. Siegel. Okay. Well, we promised it. We're going to take a look at how to set up our Linux computer to be more friendly to our children. I am talking young children, three-year-old, four-year-old, uh, so preschool, right up to my daughter's age, who's six, um, and maybe seven or eight years old. So, well, the question came in last week uh, in the chat room, as a matter of fact, and I, and I wasn't able to really touch on it, but the question was basically, uh, G-Dog was wondering, what's a good way to get a, a young person, a, a child, into Linux and, and mm -hmm. get them set up with a Linux distribution? Because Linux is safer for, for any user, but certainly for kids, uh, being that you can really lock it down, but also there aren't the viruses and things like that that you need to worry about with a Windows operating system. So really, really nice to be able to set something up that has, you know, that's on Linux for the kids. That's a good idea. I think so. <laughs> but here's the kicker. And this is what a lot of people end up doing. They put together a computer for the kids because they think, well, I don't want them touching my computer. And that's true to some degree. Certainly if you have a laptop, you don't want your kid spilling water on it, right? If it's a desktop, you know, if your keyboard gets wrecked, you can replace it for 10 bucks. No big deal. But a lot of times we think, well, we've got to, you know, I don't want them messing around with my desktop. You know, here, here we go. There's my desktop. I've got it set up kind of the way that I want it. You know, it's got the applications that I use. It looks the way that I like it. It's got, you know, the stuff that I want to be able to do. You know, the effects that I use. I don't want my kids messing around with that. So what do I do? Can I still give them access to this computer, but not in such a way that they're going to be able to ruin my personal stuff, my personal installation? So along comes Kimo. And what it is is basically a distribution. It's been around for a long time. I shouldn't say along, along comes. Let's take a look. Kimo, Kimo, I say Kimo because I'm saying it kind of phonetically. Here we go. Kimo for kids. Dot com. Okay. Oh, look at that. There's us. Look at that. Cool stuff. Okay. <laughs> On the left-hand side, you've got a download link. You can get a torrent of Kimo 2 is the current version. It's been around for uh, quite some time. You can download that ISO. So that's one way to do it. Here's the thing, if, if you download an ISO, you're going to be installing the operating system on your computer, and that's what is going to be installed on the computer. So if you're building a computer specifically for your kids, then I would say, yeah, give it a go, uh, install from that ISO, you're good to go. In my case, I've already got Ubuntu installed, I'm using Zorin OS, so it's an, it's an Ubuntu-based distribution. So what I can do is I can actually bring up Synaptic Package Manager. And if you've got Ubuntu installed or any Ubuntu-based distribution, Mint or whatever, go in and do a search for Kimo and go to Kimo Session and uh, install that. Now, you see that there's uh, quite a bit of stuff that it's going to include with it because it comes with some games for the kids. It comes with the new session. It comes with uh, the desktop environment, XFCE. And uh, you may be concerned that's going to take up a lot of space. So we'll just go into Terminal. We'll use apt-get just to show you how much space that actually takes up. Not as sufficient as you would think, or significant, I should say. So there you go, 372 megabytes is all this is going to take up on your disk. Okay, so that's not, that's not over the top. So here we are in my existing Zorin OS installation, or Ubuntu installation. I'm going to bring back up Synaptic Package, pardon me, Synaptic Package Manager. Go back to my search for Kimo and install. Take about two minutes to install this. I'm going to accelerate things for you. And basically what we're doing here is we're being able to establish Kimo on our desktop so that the kids can use it, but we're not replacing our Ubuntu installation. We're not reinstalling our operating system. We're simply using a new session. Uh, Rob Gore mentioning that there is a, uh, a virtual disk image that you can use as well. That does cost $1.99 in order to get that. Here we're working with a, free, uh, a freely available version. I would encourage you to support them if, uh, if you find this useful, as, as any of these kinds of free things. I'm going to go into my user manager now, and I'm going to create a new user for the kids. and call this one the children. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up that user so that it automatically loads Kimo when they log in. 
add a mom and dad password, okay? Tell it, you don't want it to automatically log in. You need to have it request a password. We're gonna log out of my current session. And now, we're gonna click on the children, which we just created, and change our session. This is why we needed that password to be there. Change our session to Kimo. Kimo dash session. There it is. So once we log in, we will see we are straight into the Kimo desktop and we can get started popping things on the lower menu down there. I'm gonna grab Super Tux Cart. My daughter likes that. And just drag it on there until it gives you a space like that and let it go. And then we can configure it, bring up each application, set it for full screen if you like, which is what I'm gonna do here. And uh, here we go, go into options. And I'm gonna set that to full screen. And my screen is 16 over 9, so be mindful of your display proportions. I'm going to set that and apply. And you can see that's perfectly filled the screen, so I'm going to keep that. And then uh, I'll just exit and then reopen it just to make sure that the settings have taken place. Because we want to set this up to be as simple for our kids as possible. There we go. Perfect. So next up, we're pretty much ready to go. I'm going to delete this panel at the top. You can always re-add it. If you want to uh, just follow the steps here and just right clicking on the panel and deleting it, the top one, panel one, and uh, now it's gone. Nice and clean, nice and simple for the kids. And it's got uh, a nice little assortment. We've got Gcompre and some other tools that come pre-installed and set up. And I'm just going to add a log out button by right clicking on my panel down there and adding that feature. There we go. So back to our login prompt. I'm going to log back in as myself, and we're going to finalize this installation. See how quick this is? Real easy. Make sure you change your session back to your GNOME or whatever you were using because the installation is going to set everything back to XFCE. So you want to make sure you reconfi reconfigure yours. You only have to do it once. And go back into User Manager and bring up that the children user or whatever you ended up calling it. Go to Advanced Settings and enter your password if necessary. Next up, we're going to go in here and basically untick all these boxes unless there's something that you want to give them access to. This is going to remove access to things like the internet and being able to insert CDs. And Now we're going to change our password settings and just tell it, don't prompt me for a password anymore. So now they can't change the session. They can't do anything other than just log in, do their thing. I'm going to log back out to show you. So now, if my child clicks on the children, there it is, click, goes straight in, and we're set, good to go. That's as simple as it is. Brilliant stuff, right? So just as a test this afternoon, I actually set this up, and I set my six-year-old daughter down <laughs> for the very first time. She's never used Kimmo before. And instantly, she was going into stuff and playing with different games. And you saw how easy it is to just drag and drop things down onto the panel. So it's F XFCE, so you can drop things down there, different applications. Once you've deleted the top panel so that they can't get into ac extra stuff, you can recreate the panel by right-clicking on your bottom panel and adding a new panel. Or you can do whatever you want. You can just add new applications that way. Really, really straightforward. But I sat Tally down and said, okay, well, take a look. And she, she thought it would be fun to do what she calls Tally Talks Tech. <laughs> she, she wants to be a, a television broadcaster when she's older. And, very and cool. That's some, she's still very shy in front of the camera, so, so take it easier on her. But I, I, uh, I put the camera in front of her and let her do Ooh. her thing. So here she is trying Kimmo for the first time. She's six years old. She's never used it before. And this is how easy it is for a six-year-old to get using Kimmo. Today we'll be looking at Kimmo. Draw us a quick picture. Uh huh.
say I'm finished. I like him always very easy to use. So there she is, she is using it for the first time. Oh. And <laughs> the, she ends it by saying that it's really easy to use. She really likes, it, likes mm -hmm. it. She's begging me to install it on the computer upstairs. And see, that's what's interesting about it is by being able to install the session as opposed to the entire operating system, the, reinstalling. Uh, my wife's computer is is in the kind of public area of our house where the kids play and everything. So they often use her computer. Here's an opportunity for us to put in a new session where my wife can log out or switch user. She doesn't have to log out. And the kids can just click on the kids, and it automatically brings them up into Kimmo, and they have access to their very favorite games and nothing but. Just the stuff that, that uh, we have set up for our kids. It keeps them safe. It also makes things easier for them, and it gives them a fun uh, user experience and I think that's important for our young kids because it gives them a chance to get to know computers to get familiar with Linux in such a way that uh, it's a positive uh, thing in their life and and to know that uh, hey there, there are no pop-ups there are no malicious pieces of software which which we become very familiar mm -hmm. with on on Windows uh, in in a very short amount of time um, but uh, ideally I think it's a great scenario where we can just log out log back in as the kids they can just click on it and boom it's into their personal space. It's their computer when they're logged into Kimo, which is very cool. But then mom or dad, we log out, we log back in as ourself, and it's right back as you see it. There it is. Cool stuff, eh? Cool. So Linux is, is very unique that way where we can actually set up these sessions. So each user can have their very own user experience. It's much different than Windows uh, where it's really your own space. Um, so that's, that's just a little demonstration of how we can use that for our children. This is Category 5 Technology TV, and we're online at www.category5.tv. Just emphasis again, uh, Kimo is spelled Q-I-M-O, and you can go to uh, Kimo. 4kids.com. You can download the full ISO if you like. You can install it on your computer as the main operating system if it's just for the kids. But then again, you can install it as a package. Kimo Session. Kimo Dash Session uh, on any Ubuntu-based distribution. Or download the packages from their website if you're using a different distribution as well. Cool? Very cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks, everybody. Any questions in the chat room? Notes? Oh, no. <laughs> There's mention that Tally's very cute. There are some... <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Yeah, she's, a, she's a doll. She lost... I don't know if you noticed, but she lost her second front top tooth uh, over Christmas. <laughs> so she's got two missing big top front teeth and the one lower one. So she's <laughs> completely, like, gapping. Yeah. So cute. <laughs> cool. Any other questions for us as uh, time rolls on? Uh, We've got about 10 minutes, so if you have any questions for us, Sammy says, and you know, you got some questions for us in the chat room, live at category5.tv is our email. Category 5 on Freenode. Cool. I have another inbox awesome. viewer question for you. My pizza's getting cold. Oh, well, then you should eat it. No, I'll just, I'll just talk. People, people can listen to me you talk insist. for the next 12 minutes. All right. Well, that's a bad idea. Well, this fear question says, Hi, Robbie and gang. First, I want to thank you for your answer you gave me about com uh, Compositing Desktop Zoom and the XZoom alternative. I finally switched fully to Linux since I question. only... What if they can hear me chew? Um, Sorry. You want me to talk louder? Yeah, maybe speak up. Since I only have a, <laughs> a 60 gigabyte solid state drive in my PC, I'm wondering how to use my external drive with all my music and movies on it. A, as a home directory, or which sounds better? Mm. You know what? I, I'll stop. I, Dennis, I think that we got this question last week, and it may be redundant. Oh, duplicate. Correct me if I'm wrong. Duplicate question. Oh, so, well. Sorry about that, At folks. At least you got to eat some pizza. Sorry about that. I did. I planned that. See, I, I, knew I, wouldn't, I knew I wouldn't have to answer it. I practiced my enunciation, and that's good. Yeah, that was that's good. good for me. Yeah, yeah, you, said, yeah. You, you said the words. I, I'm so yay. proud of you. <laughs> Oh, wow. So how long are you going to be gone for? School's coming up. Oh. Next week. How long am I gone for? Yeah. I think, and you know, I never actually look at the syllabus. This is horrible. And so I don't even know when reading week is. I think it's mm. three months. That's important to know. So in that time is reading week? Sometime Sometime, yeah. So you'll come see us during that week. If I remember when reading week yeah. is. Because you're supposed to be studying, so you'll be mm -hmm. on the air. Studying. Mm -hmm. Studying. 
you could just we'll do a show on all the questions that you have for your course Krista final. should be studying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How do I do this in PHP again? It's like a question from your final or something. Mm-hmm. That'd be good. That'd work. That'd be good. Yeah. You can we'll practice cover it. with the viewers. We'll put it on, on video. You can put it on like your iPhone and, and see you can my watch frazzled it. studying mode. Uh, <laughs> it's not good. Hmm. Any questions for us in the chat room? Nice to see everybody. Did we get any new viewers? I didn't see anybody, but if you are new this week, uh, I know we often have new viewers who join us in the chat room. If you're watching and you're not in the chat room, I'd encourage you to get there. Uh, it's a fun place to hang out with other viewers, especially during the live show. Mm-hmm. Have you gone over much PHP on the show before? Um, not a whole lot. We covered a little bit in the uh, web dev series, yeah. um, but we didn't get too heavy into it. I've had some good talks with Garby in the chat room. Yeah. Because sometimes I'm there and sometimes I'm answering questions about PHP. Uh, we've got some cool stuff in our wiki. Um, but uh, no, not a lot of questions have come in for on-air um, perusal. Might be something for a mm-hmm. feature if uh, somebody has a question. Yeah, I'd be happy to, JVSCC, who Look at all says, the do more PHP, PHP support. Look at that. Dragon Texas, well, hey, JVSCC. You, you let me know what you'd like to Garby. see. Echo, hello world. And see, I don't know much about PHP either, because mm-hmm. my class just follows the basics, so... True enough. That would be super cool. Yeah. I could sit here as stunned and confused as the rest of you, or more so. But you can watch it over and, and over again. And learn. Emil, uh, 1976, says, could we look at HTML5 and CSS3? That, that'd be great. I think that's pretty but, cool. But at the same time, we kind of need to grasp HTML4 and CSS2 before we get into it. Hmm. Or at least the understanding of the standards and what they do. Well, yeah. it sounds like it's another series. There we go. Series starting uh, on reading week. <laughs> do a, a one week series. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That'd be fun. You guys like it? Vote for it. Yeah. Speaking of voting, go to our website, bottom of the site, bottom right, vote. Questions there every single week. All right. Yeah, lots of votes for more web development stuff. So uh, so we also need to hear from you if you're adamantly against that. I know we put Jot to sleep last time. Oh, yeah. He had good naps, though. That was, it was good. good naps. Yeah. That was good. So it's a win-win. <laughs> Jot gets naps, and everyone else learns. JVSCC says, is HTML5 a question? That'll be the questions that we get. (laughs) A viewer question uh, comes in to us uh, this week. uh, HTML5. HTML5. (laughs) Okay, Mm -hmm. let's get started (laughs) with doc type. That's good. Mm -hmm. PHP and MySQL, Darktower59 says, interesting stuff. Getting into some databasing and things like that, that'd be fun. Tough, though, to do in a a one-hour show. Mm-hmm. I mean, we had, we, I think we managed pretty well with cat5.tv slash web dev in that we had to kind of space things out over several weeks. Mm-hmm. But it's tough because you you got to get somewhere. you got to hit a milestone each show. And with getting into MySQL and stuff, there's a lot of very, you know, sophisticated stuff where we're going to lose a lot of people during that 15 minutes. So Lots of naps. Lots of naps. Bring your pillows. But it could be interesting. Yeah look into it. We're going to write some basic, Greg in Texas says. We'll go back to GW. What's GW? <laughs> early, early basic language. Oh. Mm-hmm. Just watching the chat room here, folks. So, chat room's flying by. People are making fun, poking fun. No questions other than <laughs> HTML5. Basic. Well, now he started something. Now that's all the chat room can talk about. 10 go to 10. That is going to max out your 8 megahertz computer CPU. Sammy says, actually has a question. He says, what was the reason for the switch from open office to star office in later Ubuntu revs? You mean Libre Office, Libre Office, uh, is because uh, open office was bought out by, well, Sun was bought out by Oracle. And Oracle is basically, yeah. Hmm. Here's another question. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brie Murray. I'm so, having a, oh, uh, uh, It's running away. Uh, just Fondest before, it, as it runs away, I should just say LibreOffice <laughs> is a fork of OpenOffice. It's the same software. It's just uh, the Open Document Foundation took over and said, you know what? We're not going to do OpenOffice anymore. We're going to do LibreOffice. It's our own thing. It's a fork, and it is no longer Oracle. 
That's all. That's all he wanted it's to say. It's open. Yeah. Hmm. So. It's free. Before Robbie talked over me. Open Office isn't dead. Again. It's See? just that it's oracles. Hmm. I'm watching the chat room. Do you have anything else? You've frozen the chat room at well, a particular I had line to in because time. You set this I'm up watching so it fly like by and answering 40 questions. 40-point font, so I can see like three lines at a time. Okay. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, I've frozen Well, it. I'm sorry. Yeah, I heard your eyesight was really bad this it week. It is so. bad. Yeah. But, you know, 40 points it's, a little. So, yeah. Well, okay. Anyways, so. Go ahead. Uh, Brie Murray says, I'm having a problem keeping my Samba shares in Linux. I can set up okay, but when either the host or client desktop is rebooted, the share is not visible, and I have to set up the share again. Question mark? Hmm. How are you setting up the share? Are you using the GUI? Are you doing it through Bash? <clears throat> Just editing the uh, samba.com for what are you doing? Samba can be uh, a bit of a beast as far as if you're having trouble there, it can be tough to work through, especially if you've customized stuff. If you're using the GUI stuff, then it could be as simple as your IP address changing and your host name's not updating. Um, so set a static IP. But if you're actually losing the share, like it's disappearing and you're not, uh, you're no longer shared. Or is it just that you can't access it from other computers, Bri? So, um, using the Nautilus GUI from another Linux computer, you're trying to connect to the IP address, is that right? Sorry that there's a bit of a delay here. For those of you who are watching, we're waiting for Bri Murray to respond there in the chat room. Uh, so shares the videos folder to a Windows machine. And then, so from the Windows machine, you're going slash slash 192.168.1.100 or something, whatever your computer is. So is your IP address changing? Does the share, does the share disappear from the computer, the, the Ubuntu computer? Or does it just, you just lose access to it from your, uh, your Windows computer? There's so many variables here, man. And, and... I, I could ask you tons and tons of questions. Might be something that we should chat about in the chat room afterwards. Uh, certainly the Samba forums, uh, Ubuntu forums as well, would be a fantastic place to get help on that kind of problem because a lot of people there are going to have experience and be able to answer, yeah, ask you the questions that need to be asked. But uh, if you're using the GUI in Ubuntu, you're creating the share, and it's vanishing, as in yeah it disappears from the windows machine but does it disappear from the ubuntu machine because then if it's disappearing from the windows machine it's a windows issue not an ubuntu issue necessarily so is it a mount point again i go back to your host name is it is the ip address changing and windows is not detecting that change um, so a couple of different variables try mounting it to the ip address set a static ip address on your ubuntu machine and then try mounting to your Windows machine using the IP rather than the host name. Tell me, Bri, is that is that any help to you? I know we're just about out of time here. Um, Samba is is basically Windows file sharing, and between Windows and Linux, you can share files over your network. Um, Samba is the Linux equivalent to SMB protocol on on Windows. So, same process never fails when sharing from a Windows machine to Linux, vice versa. So is, is it, Brian Murray, that your Windows machine is a static IP and your Linux machine is getting dynamic off the router and incrementing, getting a higher IP each time you reboot? Or just tossing ideas, right? And when you, when you reboot, here's my kind of final question because we're out of time, but Brian Murray, if, if you reboot your Linux machine and you say your Windows machine loses access to that share, and then you go to recreate the share. Does the share look like it still exists, or is it gone and you've got to recreate that share? If that's the case, it might be a permissions issue, saving it to, uh, like saving the settings so that when you reboot, it uh, happens again, it recreates that share. Uh, it could be um, if you're booting from a flash drive and your flash drive loses those settings on boot. Um, Brian Murray's gonna send me some, uh, some messages on uh, IRC as well, just to kind of follow up with that question, so. Sorry, I'm not more help at the moment, but big question. Samba's a big question, right? It's a big part of your operating system being able to share through your network. Little issues like IP addressing, host names, uh, it could be share issues. There's so many different things that could be issues there. So 
but uh, but we are out of time, Bri. So I will talk to you in PM. And uh, nice to have everybody here joining us tonight. Good to see you. Thank you for coming out. Yes. Good I'll time. I'll see you guys in the future. In the future. When I am smarter. Yeah. And can read. I look forward to I that. I can read properly. Yeah, that'd be good. Hmm. That'd be good. I'll practice. It'll be a great show. <laughs> Yeah, for once. We have yet to have an awesome show. Well, on oh, reading... I mean, Category 5 in general is awesome. Yeah, you and I together is kind of like, it's a, it's a catastrophe a little bit. Well, we had pizza and we had water. I mean, I could think of ways it could get it. better. I mean, <laughs> water. But, uh, you know, it's, it's all good. But uh, reading week, we should get you to do a lot of reading um, yes. on the show. I'm thinking about 30 I minutes like of read. news. Uh, with, with, <laughs> with, with a lot of with really big words i'm thinking maybe if if some of our uh-huh. uh, our german viewers could submit uh n- names um Give that, <laughs> yeah, as long as you're not easily offended town names by my yeah. mispronunciation of all your names oh you can't be offended no you've got to laugh Thank point giver. and jeer <laughs> can't be offended all right well hey it's uh it's great it's to see you thanks for being here yeah so, no problem and we'll uh, look forward to seeing you in, uh, in several weeks time but she's off to school mm-hmm. folks uh but get uh, learned up real well she'll like. be back yeah go get learned we'll see ya have a great week everybody <laughs> see ya Bye.